Hi, in this uh, section we're going to talk about prompts. Now prompts are a really important part of your speech application because it's effectively the front facing part of your um, creation, right? This is what the caller is going to hear because he has nothing to see. He has nothing as far as a point of reference other than what he's hearing your application say to them. And so in fact it is the most important thing about your app. Now, if the callers don't understand your prompts, your application is not going to do well. If your prompts misrepresent what your application is supposed to do, your application isn't going to do well. So the first thing I want to say is um, don't worry about making them perfect right off the bat. Through the process of experimentation, you'll find that your applications grow with your application and represent your application very well. Now, along the way, there are a couple of guidelines that will help you uh, make your application great. Now, the first thing are, is that prompts need to elicit a predictable response from the caller. And this is because with speech recognition, you have to be able to predict what the caller is going to say. And I mean exactly what the caller is going to say. There's a little bit of fudge room, but in general, when the person says, I want a cheeseburger, right, you need to know that they're going to say, I want. Or you need to change that prompt so all that they say is cheeseburger. And so when you're designing your prompts, even if they sound great and wonderful and the voice sounds perfect and they represent your company great, so on and so forth, if the callers say things that you weren't expecting all the time, that prompt is not going to work. So that's one guideline. Now the other idea is that you want it to be appropriate for the situation. Right? Now I don't want to have a bubbly person helping me with my banking transaction because if I have a bubbly person helping with my banking transaction, I don't have the warm and fuzzies about it. So what we want to try to do is, is have a voice that people are going to trust to help them to their solution. Now the other idea is this, is this process of the, the prompt being too long-winded. Um, if the prompt drones on and on and on. The callers will really get bored with listening to them. Likewise, they're going to think that it's going to take them too long to reach their destination. So it's this idea that you want your, your prompts to be as concise as you can make them. And in fact, this goes along with the idea of another application death is having a prompt that is too, the start of the call being too long. I have had many of application where the uh, stakeholder uh, insisted that we had to play all of these prompts ahead of time. And so we had about uh, 45 to 60 seconds of prompts saying various things to the caller, um, giving them instructions, uh, giving them uh, legal um, ease about the call may be recorded, so on and so forth. And finally, they asked the question, would you like to try the automatic voice ordering system? And they would say, no, and go right to the call to, the, to a, um, to a uh, uh, live operator, which is really the one thing we want to try to avoid. So that's really important. Now, we have our prompts. And these prompts, um, again, are trying to tell the caller what they need to answer so the call can move along. Now, the key idea is that we are building upon the normal um, process that people speak to one another with. And so, as we'll find out, most people are very, very polite. And so what happens is they will avoid interrupting the prompt. Now, with speech applications, it's very important for the ability to barge in. But not everyone will barge in because they're used to letting people stop speaking before they then take their turn. So we want to give people the opportunity to take turns with the speech application. Let me give you an example. Let's say I have a call router and I want to um, give the people an opportunity to uh, tell me the first and last name or department um, as soon as they can. So I might have the prompt be like this. Please tell me the first and last name of the person you'd wish to speak to or you can tell me a department. Departments that are available are sales, marketing, technical support. Now, what I've done is I've given the caller a chance to take a turn and tell me what they want um, before I start going into a list of possible choices. Um, this helps um, give those people that know what they're doing a chance to speak up, use the application, and move along without having to listen to the whole thing. Now. Um, this, in effect, is, is an idea that you are trying to achieve the same kind of speech patterns that people have with each other. And 
and to a degree, w there's a certain amount of uh, emotional understanding between the caller and, and the way the prompts are talking to them. So if a prompt is uh, talking very fast to the caller, the caller will try to respond in a fast manner. If the prompt um, is slower, the caller will feel like they have more time to answer it. So it's very important if you're going to ask the caller a difficult question, that the prompt slows down so the caller does not feel rushed. Because when a caller is rushed, they tend to have, they have a tendency to stumble over their words. And that's terrible for speech recognition because it will decrease the confidence score to the point where either we're going to throw it out or we'll do a confirmation or we'll just get it wrong. So we want to take care of that. Now, Another idea is that you are trying to build this process of, of making a connection between the caller and the prompts. And so to achieve this, we want to make sure that our, our prompt volume and personality is consistent. So if prompts are higher and then lower, the caller, it breaks the, the psychological effect, right? The, the caller is never fooled that it's a live person. It's just that they relate to the application. And so the changing of the volume breaks that. Uh, the change in personality where it's serious at one moment and, and, and happy the next um, breaks that, 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 that build up that you've, you've, you've attained. Um, to a certain degree, you want to establish and maintain a connection with the caller. So let's take an example of a longer transaction, uh, mm -hmm. such as transferring money from a bank account from savings to checking. At the beginning of this transaction, I want to uh, be serious, and um, in the middle of the transaction, I'll want to be encouraging, uh, such as, oh, we're almost there. Um, and then at the end of the transaction, I'll be congratulatory. Great job. We're all set and move on to the next transaction for this caller. Um, now, the next thing, I, I, it's one of my personal pet peeves, is you'd never want to mimic a DTMF application with your speech application. And the reason why is they're built on different paradigms. A DTMF application is a menu-based application. You do not want your speech application to mimic this, because a speech application is a question-based system. So what ends up happening you have um, a menu of, say, eight items. And you're going to try to directly reproduce that into a speech application. Right off the bat, many people think in terms of, well, I'll just have them. You can, for sales, you can say sales or press one. For marketing, you can say marketing or press two. This never works. This makes for a very complicated application because normally when people use touch tone applications, they'll sit there and they'll, they'll think, oh, three sounds about right, but let me listen to the rest just to make sure. And then once they've decided, yes, three in fact was the one they wanted, they'll press three. Now imagine if they're trying to remember a word now, right? They're trying to remember marketing and they're listening to all the other choices and they go, no, no, I wanted the other one, but then They've forgotten the word, right? I can put my, my finger on the three button. I can't necessarily put my finger on the word marketing. So again, you, you want to avoid menus. Anyway, that's my summary of prompts and, and oh, there's one more thing. Um, with confirmations, what you want to do um, with confirmations is confirm the intent of the caller and not what they actually said. Now, when a caller um, ask for, say, customer support, and really what you have is a technical support department. You don't want to ask the caller, did you say technical support? Because in fact, what they said was customer support. Now, oftentimes in speech applications, you'll have more words in your grammar that represent one thing. So in your grammar, you may have technical support, customer support, and customer service all going to the same department. But you don't have prompts typically for each one of those choices. So what you do is you confirm the intent. Did you want to speak with our customer service department? And they'll say yes. I'm not going to ask what they said. I'm going to ask if they want to go and do something. Anyway, that wraps up my, um, my, my, my talk on uh, prompts. The next section will talk about grammars and best practices for developing your application. Thank you.